Welcome back to the Enterprising Podcast, where we help agents work smarter, not harder. Joining us today is Carmela Hampton, a real estate agent and investor from San Antonio, Texas. Welcome, Carmela. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing great. So um, take a moment and just share with us about how you got into real estate and what drew you to the industry. Uh, so I wish I had some kind of like, oh, I had this epiphany, you know, kind of story. Yeah. But I feel like um, it just, it kind of just happened. Um, I was looking for a house when I came to Texas to, okay. to purchase. And then um, as we were walking the houses, I was falling in love with every single house and trying to figure out how to make a decision. And then I realized not that my realtor wasn't doing anything. Cause we all know we do a lot behind. We do a people. lot. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I can go look at houses and get paid for it. And then I can talk to people all day too. Why not? Right. Like, and I'm in the military at this point. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this would be a good side gig. Um, for play play money. So that that's yeah. pretty much how I got into it. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, my story, it's very similar. I, you know, was about to turn 40 and I go, oh, I just want a real estate license. I I, I probably won't do anything with it, um, but I just want to have it. It was like a midlife crisis thing. So we all come <laughs> into this in different approaches or um, different reasons. And it's always very interesting um, kind of where the universe brings us, uh, yeah, which really. is always very different than where we expect to go. Um, very quickly, you started to, um, to lean into the investing side side and uh, fix and flips. So what was it about that that was so attractive to you? Um, okay, this one's going to be kind of typical answer. Your HGTV wow factor. Mm -hmm. Like that's what caught me. That's what catches a lot of people. Um, but I don't know. I, I decided I, I could have fun with this. You know, I don't right. have to stick to traditional selling houses, buying houses, um, being the representative. I can play with it. You know, and, and there's so many different options. So why not? Um, so I just took a chance and and I dug into it and then I became obsessed. Yeah. So talk to me about some of the things that you have learned along the way, other than the fact that HGTV lies to us. Uh, but what else <laughs> yes. have you learned about flipping, um, you know, that maybe passing off a little advice to someone else who's thinking about taking that same road? Um, so I would say it's always going to be scary. Right. You're always going to be scared to start. You're always going to be nervous to start. But that's the best time to do it. You do it scared. And mm -hmm. as long as you have um, like a calculated risk, you know, you take the risk, yeah. but you make sure the numbers are right. And then you go for it. The hardest part, to be honest with you, is starting. That's the hardest part. It's not finding the deal. It's not during the flip. It's not selling it. It's getting started. Your first one, your first contract, I guess, <laughs> getting into it. So talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, the calculated risk, because um, at least for me, it it feels uh, terrifying. And um, this idea of like, oh, I'm putting forth money. And um, what if it doesn't work? You know me, I'm the plan for the worst, hope for the best sort of <laughs> approach. Um, so talk to me a little bit about um, kind of how you mitigate risk when it comes to fix and flip. So you Okay, so realistically, you can't mitigate all risk, right? There's right. always going to be some kind of surprise. Um, but for me, because I'm the same way too, you know, I, I like to have everything planned. I don't want to take that step. I don't want to take that jump yeah. unless I know 100% I'm going to be safe. So mm -hmm. it was a big thing for me to just jump in it after reviewing numbers. But basically, that's that's the key is you you find your purchase price you do the numbers, figure out how much it's going to cost. You don't forget you have two closing costs. People forget you have closing costs when you purchase it and closing costs when you sell it. Mm -hmm. um, so don't forget about those. Don't forget about your holding costs. Don't forget about your utilities and and, and whatnot that you have to pay for. Um, put some some money for wiggle room also. like I like yeah. to add a good $10,000 wiggle room to my rehab budget just in case because you just never know. And as long yeah, as yeah. those numbers are solid and you still have at least, I like to come out of profit or, or sorry, I would like to net about 20,000 for each flip. So okay. if your number is at 20,000 and up, then it's more than likely safe. Yeah. But if it's less than that, you might have to be be a little careful. I, I'm not an expert. Maybe the experts, they're they're good with, you know, <laughs> the five to 10,000 um, 
net in in profit, but I I get scared, so I stay mm-hmm. away from the the smaller numbers. Talk to me a little bit about um, the creativity that you get to impart on your fix and flips, because that actually seems like uh, the most fun part or the most <laughs> HGTV part of the whole thing. So talk to me about how you leave your personal touches uh, when it comes to fix and flip, but still making it something marketable on the other end. Right. So, you know, what's funny is um, I used to always joke around and say my sister was blessed with all the creativity genes. Like I was left with none of them. So how I got into this position, I don't know. God has <laughs> get, has mm-hmm. a way. But um, for me, I like to leave it where, of course, I, I try not to get too personally involved and like decorate the way I want it. I try to keep right. it very you know, mass in general, but I put a lot of heart into it as if I was going to live there. And then I think that's kind of how I, I, I figure out what kind of style I want. I like the open concept and that's big in today's market anyway. Nobody wants to live in a small box. Right. And then you do your, your um, upgrades, your doesn't even have to be granite it could be quartz you know and then sometimes you give it that like wood finish also so that's pretty much my style I'm kind of like more in like the farmhouse modern boho Mm -hmm. (laughs) type of yeah area but I discover new things every time so one of the other things that I, I kind of picked up very early on in, in our interview, you talked about coming into things scared. And and we here at the Enterprising Agent focus a lot on, you know, mindset, motivation, but also um, setting appropriate b- boundaries and uh, making sure that we are um, taking care of ourselves um, in the same way that we want to take care of our clients or in your case, to take care of our projects. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a little bit about, um, something that you've already been very open with, and we discussed this earlier, just, you know, some of the um, mental health struggles that you had, especially as you were transitioning out of the military and going into real estate full time. Yeah, so it was, um, I officially retired this year, but I got out last year. And um, the first couple months of getting out of the military was was pretty hard. You know, you start mm-hmm. thinking, who am I? You know, who who's Carmela? Because you had the military to do. I was in for almost 11 years. They mm-hmm. told me what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why you're doing it. And and you didn't really, not that you didn't have to think, but it was one of those, like, they broke you down to build you back up the way that they right. needed you to be. So then when you come out into the civilian world, you're like, okay, well, I don't have to ask permission to do what I want to do, but what do I want to do? You right. know, so I was lost for a while and then... um. Then, you know, I had real estate in, in the background. I didn't really mm-hmm. do too much with it at this point. Um, then I started thinking, well, let me pick back up on it. But when I started picking back up on it, you start thinking and questioning yourself, am I doing yeah. it right? Like, what am I, or what am I really doing? You know, um, who can I go to for help? Who can I ask? And this, and and a lot of um, boundary issues also, you know, because mm-hmm. when you're in the industry, I mean, to be real, you have to have strong boundaries or else people are just going to walk all over you. Clients, other realtors, like everybody in general, people in general. And so um, that was hard for me. I, I I focused a lot on what other people thought of me. Mm-hmm. Um, it took a really big toll. Um, I had a lot of, you know, um, just uh, what, what do you call it? Um, self-doubt, I guess we can just categorize it as that. Um, but you know, with therapy and, um, going down this healing journey, you realize the stronger your boundaries are, the better your mental health is. And as long as you have people around you that can support you, you know, and it doesn't have to be like 50 million people. It doesn't have to be all of social media because the haters are going to hate. You know, and if you don't have any, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. People aren't paying attention to you if you don't have right. any. So, um, so really that, like just and then having a, a set schedule for myself. I realized um I started relying heavily on my bed <laughs> and like sleeping all day and and just n- not the best, not the healthiest. So I started getting up early in the morning, going to the gym, then taking the kids to school doing some admin work in the the beginning half of the day and then what I call field work <laughs> for the mm-hmm. late latter half of the day. So that's that's pretty much how I get through things. 
So you 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 mentioned, you know, one of the things that took a toll on your mental health was talking or thinking too much or caring too much about what other people thought of you and were you doing enough and what would your client say if you set up a boundary and all of that. Do you feel that working more on the investing side, that fix and flip where it's like, this is my project and my project alone. And I am both agent and client. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of helps to get rid of that. Well, what do other people think? Well, it doesn't matter because there's no client to please. It doesn't matter because until you're putting it on the market and getting offers, there's no other agent to worry about. It's something that you can um, amplify as much or as little as you want. Do you feel that's part of why investing is so attractive to you? Um, I, I think it has something to do with it. Um, I mean, don't take me wrong. I, I love working with people regardless, mm -hmm. you know, but I think on the investment side, it, it, it probably did help me build a backbone in a sense, you know, because the investment side is so different than the residential. And especially if being a realtor and then what if I'm dealing with an investor as my client, mm -hmm. that's a whole other ball game, you know, like we're not the greatest people sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's just harder to work with a little bit, but then you have to have that switch. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, in a sense, it, it taught me to to have boundaries, to speak up for myself. And if my client is not doing something that I'm uh, morally okay with, then mm -hmm. I have the right to walk away. You know, I mean, yeah. I can fire a client; it's not unheard of. But um, yeah, I think I think it, it plays a toll in it for sure. Talk to me about how you surround yourself with those people who do support you. How did you narrow down what that truly looks like for you? And and almost what is that vetting process or what is that gut instinct when it comes to who you surround yourself with? You know, that's such a good question <laughs> because um, when I first started getting started, or when I first got started, sorry, mm -hmm. even, even nowadays, um, you try to find familiar familiarities <laughs> with other mm -hmm. people, other agents, other clients, other investors. And you, well, me, I tend mm -hmm. to attach myself, right? Really quick, just because, okay, you're similar, you're doing what I want to do, and I want to learn from you type deal. And not to mention, I would like a mentor during this mm -hmm. whole thing. So you try to find one and you find people. And um, I realized that was not the right approach in a sense, because you, you run into people who um, don't have your best interests at heart. Right. And it doesn't matter if you have a good heart, that doesn't always reciprocate to the other person. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing and how I started surrounding myself with people who genuinely care about what I'm doing and want to help um, and cheer me on, um, I started having coffee lunches you know like mm -hmm. like small intimate things where i can start the vetting process in a sense um and then you just you just find out it's energy i'm all about energy if you have bad energy i can feel it from a mile away and i'm mm -hmm. probably not gonna attach myself but also i am also a walking contradiction too because i'm really weird and sometimes i don't want to be out there <laughs> Yeah, so and I think that's fair. You know, we don't always want to have to be on. Um, yeah. And that that's one of the things that, uh, you know, boundaries that I've had to set up is, you know, there is trainer staff and coach staff and MC yeah. staff and, and these things where I'm very public facing. And then like my batteries just start right. to it go becomes, lower and lower. Um, and I'm like, I'm tapped out. I need to, yeah. I need to recharge. And you can yeah. be both at different, at different times. You know, you're, I don't think anybody is always a hundred percent one mm -hmm. thing or a hundred percent the other thing. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's an astute observation. Um, I guess the last question that I have for you, um, talk to me about, cause you know, we're right now we're um, kind of getting close to a new year. Um, and I've been very much about like reflection and, and looking back to look forward. So you know, you've been in the business for, for two years. And before we started, you talked about like, I still feel very, very new. I'm definitely not that, um, that veteran agent that, you know, that, uh, you know, have this long book of business. And I'm like, girl, most folks at this point have already tapped out. They're like real estate. What? I don't know her. Um, so you definitely have that perspective. So, um, if you could go back in time, um, and think about, almost like day one, just passed your test, Carmela, what sort of advice would you give to yourself that maybe some of our truly new agents might be able to grab a nugget from? Um, I think I would, 
I would get outside of my head. I would do mm-hmm. the most that I could to get outside of my head because usually, you know, you know, you're your own biggest critic. Yeah. And so in the beginning, you're shy. You don't want to go out there. You don't want to talk to people. What if they think I'm weird? But I would just tell myself, you know, who cares? Who cares? At the end of the day, seriously, who cares? What's going to happen? They're going to maybe look at you funny and say, no, I don't, I'm not interested or I'm, I don't want to buy a house. Then what? You move on to the next yeah. weirdo. <laughs> but yeah. I think that's People what already look at me funny. So what's one more? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't care. Like, uh, anyway, but, but yeah, I think, I think I would give myself that advice. Just who cares? Just do yeah. it anyway. Do it. Anyway. I love it. <laughs> well, if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? Oh, Facebook, definitely Facebook. So just my name, Carmela Hampton, and then send me a message, follow me. I'll follow back and whatever the case is. Let's be social media friends. <laughs> Love it. And I'll make sure I put a link down to your Facebook page in the show notes. Well, Carmela, I really want to appreciate you joining us today on the Enterprising Agent. It's been fantastic to get to know you a little bit more and talk about your approach to real estate. Thank you so much for having me, Steph. It's been a pleasure.